Okay, wait a minute. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Mubarak. We're going to open up with a fatah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm al-Din. Iyaka nabulu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihidina sarratu mustaqim. Sirat al-Ladina yanam ta'ilihim. Gair al-Makdubi alayhim wal-Dalim. Amen. Alhamdulillah. How is everyone this morning? Everybody look like they got about eight hours sleep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all, all, all right up and ready to go. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ar-Rabbil Adameen. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa addahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu an Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are grateful to Allah for this opportunity. We are in our third day. We kicked it off. Got on the running path on Friday at the Juma. And we kicked it off, finished Friday up with the with the bang, come in Saturday morning, running with the baton, finish it out Saturday night, and then they done passed it to us today, myself, Imam Elam, Imam Alfred Muhammad, and Imam Salim Man Manad, and we're going to take it to the finish line, inshallah. So, alhamdulillah, it's a success. And I want to thank the committee. First, I want to thank the Moskayas, Imam Washington Muhammad II, for allowing me to be the Ramadan chair. And, and I hope and pray that you're pleased with what we have done this weekend. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, yes. And I want to thank the committee, those of you that was on the Ramadan session planning committee. And I want to thank the secretary, Sister uh, Ella Rockman, excellent secretary. May Allah continue to uh, bless you. And inshallah, Allah bless us. We'll be back on it again next year. Inshallah. All right. <laughs> my, my wife is throwing, throwing, me, throwing me that. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Give, give her a hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Allah is showing us a picture of how the whole human family should be. Right. Right here this weekend. That's right. Yeah. And it's been beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Brother Adia blew the roof off. Yes. Yeah. And Imam Safir came in and brought it back down. <laughs> <laughs> So alhamdulillah, so, inshallah, we pray Allah bless us to be successful uh, and bless all of us, those that are traveling, bless us to have a success return home, and bless us with uh, blessed Ramadan, and also moving it to the Eid Mubarak. So inshallah, I got, we got, I'm supposed to be been on from 9 to 10 a.m., it's about 9.30, so we're going give it, to give it all we can give it for about 30 minutes. Uh, at least 45 minutes anyway. Uh, Prophet Muhammad, praise and peace be upon him, is the, is the uh, leader for the modern time. A leader. Prophet Muhammad is the leader for the modern time. Alhamdulillah. Excellent topic. Excellent topic. And we have worked it all weekend. So, inshallah, we ask Allah to assist us in conducting this talk with, to you today, this morning, the Ramadan session. And uh, we pray that Allah bless you to get the best of what we have put together here for you. I have some notes because there's some specific things that I want to say to you, inshallah. I'm going to try to 
stick with the notes if I possibly can. It doesn't always work that way. But uh, we're going to try to discipline ourselves and stay with the notes this morning. I just want to start off by sharing this with you. It was reported by Abu Huraira. May Allah be pleased with him. He said that the Messenger of Allah, prayers and peace be upon him, said that a believer is strong. A believer is strong and is, more, is better and more beloved to Allah than one who is weak. And you all are strong. You get up out of your comfortable bed, come here a whole weekend, and you have participated to make this a success. So Abu Huraira said that Allah loved those who are strong, better, and more beloved to Allah than one who is weak. And the weak one, both and the strong one, bears goodness. They both have goodness. And then it encourages us to desire eagerly what benefits you in your life from this point on whatever benefits you and your soul and your family and your life and your community life that is what you want to uh, in, indulge in that which is good that's which benefits you and that is this religion it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and our Imam, Imam Wahidi Muhammad. May Allah forgive him his shortcomings and grant him and gender to the Prophet. So he's saying, desire eagerly what benefits you. Seek help from Allah and do not slack in struggling. And if something troubles you or something befalls you, uh, you should not say, had I done such and such and so and so, or such a thing should I, uh, if I had been there, this would have happened. Or if I had been there, I would have gained from the secession. You know, Allah talks about this in the Quran, how they say, if I had uh, been there, such and such a thing would have happened. So if something happened to us in your life, in your personal life, and you're struggling in your life, in your everyday struggle, and don't say, if. I had have done such and such because that word if uh, starts the work of Satan. When you said if I had have done it would have been better or if I had have did this last year it wouldn't be the end result wouldn't be as it is today. But the prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we should say uh, it is as Allah want it to be. It is as Allah had destined it to be. It is the way Allah wanted it. So whatever happens to us, it is Allah's will. Let me just cut it short right there. Today, being here today, is Allah's will. Even though he said, well, I planned it, I'm, you know, I, I uh, made my reservation, I registered and all that, and it was my intent, but it was Allah's will. Otherwise, it wouldn't have happened. Allah uh, made it possible for us to be here. And you are a excellent audience. Excellent. And have been all three days. Allahu uh, Akbar. Looking at Prophet Muhammad and being the leader for the modern time. And Allah says in Quran, Lakum fi Rasulullah, we have in him the most exalted example. So we emulate the life of the prophet, and therefore we are leaders for the modern time. And you might not can see it between every step that you take is a pause. You don't see the pause, you don't see you, you moving, but there's a pause between every step. So with this life that we're striving for and where we come from, in America over 400 years of certitude and during I, I came through the Jim Crow period we are making tremendous progress tremendous progress 
And it is Allah's doing. Allah is the one who blessing us to be where we are today. And it is justice to us. And it is justice to America. Now, you know, we, you know, there's a lot of people that have problem with us being Muslim. And then there's a lot of people are pleased with us being Muslim. A lot of that, and not to be not to be down in the Don't get me wrong, but a lot of them wish that they was us, but they would never be us because they can't. They don't have the history that we had. That Allah prepared us for this day. Allah prepared us and allowed us uh, through the mind. Allah downloaded this information to the mind of Imam Wahdi Muhammad. And he demonstrated it for 33 plus years, and we are still benefited uh, from, I would say, the fallout by listening to his uh, DVDs, his CDs, reading his books, and books are constantly coming out on what the Imam has said to us. And last, we were saying that last night, the night of power is worse than a thousand months. That is what Allah has blessed us with with what Imam had brought to us is worth is worth the blessing of a thousand months plus moving forward. And it's taking us right into the leadership for the modern time. So Alhamdulillah, so I can see the blessing that Allah blessed us with to come into the word, to meet the word, the Quran and the Uswa Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the type says and how Imam used to teach us in the beginning uh, of the, his leadership. He used to teach us, and we were set uh, on the floor, then move, then then go to the restroom, anything, because we were afraid we were going to miss some. He taught us for for five and six hours, nonstop, and that went on for a long time. But we was hungry for it. And we sat there and we took notes. I still have some notes, some of those notes. And uh, he brought us to where Allah wanted us to be. So if you look at America as a whole, look at all the people in America, then look at us and you'll see how blessed we are and how Allah has favored us. All praise is due to Allah. So let's take a look at Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was a rounded, he was well rounded. He was a rounded man. He helped his family. Uh, and this is how Allah say we la Rasulullah, we have in him the most exalted example. Alright, so now I'm talking to the men folks. The women folks too, but heavily to the men folks. So I want both ears from the men folks. And uh maybe one ear, the women folks. Alright. So if we want to be men like the prophet, uh, you you look at his life and he was well-rounded. He helped his family. Uh, so why should we be different? He, uh, you, he was seen uh, going to the marketplaces, uh, purchasing food for the family. He was seen uh, cleaning the house Washing the dishes and now you know a lot of brothers don't want to wash dishes And that's that's not that's a that's a woman work. I wash them. I wash dishes I take I take if my if, if my wife do the dishes in the morning. I do it that night Because the dishwater irritates her skin. It doesn't bother mine So I, I don't mind doing it uh, and uh I said to her, I said, I'm doing it for you. you know, she said, no, you're doing it for yourself. You live here too. <laughs> so, alhamdulillah. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't give no back talk. <laughs> Wasn't no back talk. I just kept washing the dishes. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah. I've learned. I've learned. That's right. <laughs> So if we follow the prophet, then we won't have a problem doing these things. If you do, and, and, and what we want, we want the nature. In order to be the leaders for the modern time, we want the nature of the prophet. 
We want his nature. And if you have, if you get his nature, you'll be successful. So if, if you don't have his nature, you should pray to Allah to bless you to take on the nature of the prophet. Prayer and peace be upon him. And we can't say we follow him and reject his lifestyle. All right, now we talking. Now we talking to everybody. That was for the men folks. Now it's for the women and the men folks. Alhamdulillah. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't have the lifestyle of the people of the world. We have the world, we have Islam, and Allah said to us, do not transgress limits that were set by Allah. And if we don't transgress those limits, we will have complete freedom. And we will be able to establish a good life for ourselves on this earth. And if we do that and we die, we'll be raised up with that and that will be a blessing to us. You don't want to die and be raised up with something that will torment you. To give you an example we'll be talking about. If a person was a drunk all his life or a gambler and he died in that state, he would be raised up with that and that would, and according to his report of Hadith, it would bite his face, bite his face and the Imam told us face represents character. So his character will be uh, tormented in the hereafter until Allah says enough. So we don't want to do that. We have an opportunity. We have everything we need. We have the Quran. We have the Uswa of Prophet Muhammad, the life of Prophet Muhammad. We have the Tafsir of the Imam to take us to the finish line. Yes, with ease. And Allah created us for ease, it, it, even though we go through a lot of trouble, and that's because of our own decision. But Allah wanted us to have ease, and he created us for ease. And if we hold on to the Quran, and if we hold on to the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the top says of Imam, and you know, I, heard, I was hearing some of the speakers saying, yeah, we hold on to the Quran, and we hold on to uh, the life of the Prophet, Alhamdulillah, they both go. Allah revealed the Quran to the heart of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we have something special, and that is the tafsirs of Imam. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't miss that for nothing in the world. And I'm grateful to Allah for blessing me to be able to be exposed to the Imam. Yes. You know, we, Imam used to come to Northwest Activity Center every month for five years. And uh, the imam asked me to look after his affairs in Detroit. And I was sitting out in the audience. I'm going to show you how Allah had blessed him with good sight and how he observed. Uh, we was coming there every, every uh, fourth Sunday, and it would be five or six hundred people there at the Norfolk Activity Center. And the imam was speaking. He had Rafa and Mariam T. and Dawu and all that, but he wasn't satisfied. So I guess the whole while he was coming there, he was looking at the audience and looking for someone that Allah would bless him with. And he saw me. And he told Brother Osama to go out, you know, ask Brother Osama, who is that imam sitting there? He said, he, I, I see him coming in, he got his wife and his daughter. He said, who is, who, he didn't say man. he said, who is that brother? Brother Olson said he told him that it was his brother from Flint. And he said, uh, you tell him that I want him to come up here and sit next to me. Brother Olson came by, you know, Brother Olson liked to joke. <laughs> he came by and said, right? <laughs> he said, the ma'am said he wants you to come up here and say, I said, no, 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 no. You, I said, you, you joking. The ma'am didn't say that. And he turned around and looked up at him, and I looked, Imam was looking at us. He said, yeah, he said, come up there. He said, I'm not joking, for real. So I leaned on and told my wife, I said, Imam want me to come up on the stage. And she just smiled. I went up, and I got there, and he, Imam saluted me. So I saluted him back. And then he said, come on, Clyde Rock Mom was sitting next to him. He told Clyde, get up. <laughs> and let, it, let, 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 let the brother sit here. Yeah. And I went, sat next to him, and he uh, 
asked me what was my name. I said, uh, Hameen Rasul, I'm the Imam in Flint, Michigan. And he kind of smiled. I guess it's okay, I'm the Lord, Imam. All right, and then I, I, I was so carried away, I was so happy <laughs> to be up there that he had asked me to come up there because, see, I was going through some, they was giving me all kinds of hell. Mm -hmm. 